I always tell them, I said, the first thing you need to do is delete all your realtor friends. And they're like, well, they're my friends or my colleagues. Well, then go tell them to pay your rent for the next six months and see if they're really your friend. But I also think in the relationship side, why people don't really make it in real estate is their significant other. And I said, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get you more business so you can go buy that dream car. Instead of doing your vision board that you're never gonna get, you're never gonna go on that vacation because you don't have the right team around you. I'm going to be your team and I'm going to hold you accountable. Welcome back to another episode of the Austin Zayback Show. Today, we have a very special guest, a guy by the name of John Story. You've probably heard of him, especially if you're in real estate, if you're an agent or you run a team or you're a brokerage or you're in the title industry uh, or really anything real estate related. This is a guy who's been around the game for uh, probably about two decades, give or take. And uh, man, this is just a dude that I, I actually started following a few months ago. He's a coach. Uh, he's a leader, and he trains people all over the, the world, I believe, probably all over the country for sure. And uh, man, I'm just excited to have you on the show, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me. You just dated me, though. A couple decades. <laughs> couple decades. I when I was, what, two? Dude, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I'm old. You've been doing it for a long time, though, man. Yeah. Yeah. Started building houses when I was 12. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So was your family in real estate? Yeah. So my, my, my biological mother, was. she's still a realtor. Um, but she she got into it forever ago. Then got obviously my parents split up, and then they own a new home construction mm. company. So I started swinging a hammer when I was twelve. Dang, yeah, you gotta love so that. I've kind of done it all. So you came from uh, hard. You did hard work growing up, yep. manual labor, right? Yep. Yeah. What else did you do growing up? Was that is that the first thing you did? Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I yeah that, and then you know during the winter you don't really work a whole lot. So I became that was when I learned to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I'd go, that, I was door knocking in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I tell people like, hey, can I shovel your driveway for 10 bucks? You know, you're 12 years old, 10 bucks is a lot of money just to yeah. shovel somebody's and you got nothing else to do. So then I, I picked up uh, seven customers that every time it snowed, and then I picked up an apartment complex. Then I started doing the apartment complexes, mowing their lawns, and then I did their chemicals every day. So then I became like a handyman there too <laughs> at 12. I love that. Dude. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I, uh, I started a pool company when I was like eight or nine. Yeah. So I'm right there with you, you know, just, yeah. just grinding. That's yep. what made me who I, I am today. Like right. how much of that do you attribute to what you've accomplished? I mean, it teaches you that you got to wake up yeah. before your customers wake up. Right. Cause you want to make sure that if it's snowing, that their driveway is clear before they leave for work. Mm. Right. And so, I mean, it's kind of, I think most people think that it doesn't matter when you wake up, but I think it's really important when you wake up and get your day started. Yeah. You know, customer relationships important. That's the only way you can grow. I love that too. Yeah. yeah. So then, how long did you do that? Like, here you are. You're 12 years old. You got this little business going on. You're learning entrepreneurship. You're learning the game of of, of business, right? What What was the next thing that you ended up doing? Then I uh, let's see what did I do. I mean, I worked for my their, my company all through high school, and then out out of high school, then I worked in a lumber yard mm. when I was going through college, and then I had two semesters left and dropped out of college. I was gonna be a respiratory therapist. Wow. And then decided that I was gonna get into real estate. Dang. So I had already clipped the first year of the program, the CRT program, because I was doing home care respiratory therapy. So I was certified and I was training the college students on how to do it. And then uh just woke up and I was like, I don't wanna make a hundred grand a year. Mm. Yeah. For I mean sure. that was a long time ago too. Just, when would when would that have been to put it in perspective? I was uh probably was twenty five at the time, twenty four okay. at the time. So 18 years ago, I just Dang. decided, woke up one day. I don't think people really do that. Mm -hmm. It's happened to me a couple of times in my life where I just make dramatic moves. Yeah. Um, but I just, I don't know, at some point you just figure like you got to be worth more. I, I realized I was worth more than a hundred thousand dollars at that point. I mean, at that time, you know, almost 20 years ago, a hundred grand was equal to a couple hundred thousand at in least. today's society. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking you're gonna live your whole life. And then when you think about having kids and maybe some cars that you want that you're not going to buy out, making a hundred grand. Yeah. Times change. What do you think about like this drastic? I, I I'm kind of a guy I can relate to you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm I'm the dude that like I'll just wake up one day and make a huge life decision, where like a lot of people will kind of think on things and they'll ponder on things and they'll overanalyze and and you know or analysis paralysis is what they say, right? Like, what do you think about that? Like, do you think that you have to kind of have that capability to to succeed and be nimble as an entrepreneur or like? Uh, I think you just have to have a good skill set, man. You have to trust your instincts. And I think there's too many people who are too scared. They take too much advice from the wrong people. And uh, they haven't been where they are. You know, I look at, you know, good speakers that there are out in the world that are still talking and they're big celebrities and they fill rooms. But, I mean, not to be an asshole, but you're like 60-something years old and that's mm -hmm. not what I want to live. Mm -hmm. And these people, like, just think they're the God's greatest gift to I'm like, you're old. Yeah. Like, so what are you teaching me here? You can have all this money in the world, but you still have to work every single day and never enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. Like you always have to be on. 
Mm. That's not that's not living a life. And I've been through a lot of shit in my life, so I, I realize that that's, you know, get get to where you're comfortable and then yeah. retire. I love that. Yeah. No, I mean, and it's true, right? A lot of these people, they 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 just grind forever. Mm -hmm. They never stop grinding, you know. Yep. And um, yeah, you know, I mean, I think that that's definitely not. It's like, then why do why do that? If you, I mean, you at least have to, I think, have the ability to take off and do whatever you want, whenever you want, with whoever you want, right? Yeah. Like if you're if you take off and your business falls apart, then you didn't build anything, right? You know. Yep. My model is you have to be everywhere at once and don't have to be there. Mm. And as long as you can maintain it, build out systems. I think people try to replace systems in today's society by hiring employees or just buying the next shiny toy. Yeah. I mean, I look at our industry right now. Um, what's that chat bot or chat what? GPT? Okay. Chat G whatever it is. <laughs> but I, I look on people's stories and now they're teaching these classes. And I'm like, you haven't even mastered waking the fuck up in the morning on time mm. or even mastered like algorithms on Facebook that I teach people to do mm -hmm. or social media or doing video or even like a checklist for doing an open house or a listing and you're going to go to another class. Yeah. Our industry is so manipulated by the next shiny tool because, um, I mean, look, here's how, here's how it works. When we were talking earlier about like the, the two years that we've had best had we've ever had in industry, right. In real mm -hmm. estate. And then all these people were getting advice from these companies that have what so-called marketing reps. Right. Mm -hmm. And then once the industry you know, shifted, they were the first people to lay people off, but mm -hmm. you were giving everybody advice. Mm -hmm. And now all these big companies, they're getting a mass exodus and they're going to from, you know, where they're at to brokers and different places. And, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what real estate brokerage or, or, or mortgage or whatever, or even title companies. And we were just talking about, they just, they're shutting doors. Yeah. Like, so you're not building a sustainable business. You're building a business that's only what the market dictates. And so that just means you don't have a skill set. Mm. So true, bro. And I want to talk more about that in a little while, like what, you know, the, 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 the market and the people who got in in 2020, 2021, the people who've never seen any other market. I want to dive into all that uh, really quick before we get too far into that. I want to go back to you getting into real estate at okay. a young age. Did you become a realtor? Uh, so I, I did the new home construction stuff. Okay. And then I flipped into title and then I did loans for a little bit because Utah was weird, man, because here you can just be whatever, mm -hmm. but there I had to take the 80 hour course for two weeks straight, be in a classroom, had to pass certified tests to just be a title rep at the time. Wow. So I didn't know everything that a realtor know. And so I had to pass a real estate test and a title wow. test to know all the, like how to read settlement statement, easements, all the stuff. So it was a little different. I think everybody should have to go through that, to be honest. And especially in the title industry, it helps finer appreciation to understand a little bit more versus just going, here's a free pen, mm -hmm. you know, a million percent. Yeah. So here you, were you doing both then at the time? Yeah, so when I when I was getting into the real estate industry, obviously you're broke, mm. right? So I was a bouncer, and then I I, I were that was probably one of the funnest jobs I've ever had <laughs> in my life, and then uh, just tossing people around and never getting in trouble, <laughs> and then uh, I uh, I worked for my stepdad at the time on the weekends, mm. and then I got into the title industry. And I remember I was so broke I lived off cash advance paychecks for probably the first nine months. Wow, had my 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 house that I lived in foreclosed on, my car repossessed, my motorcycle repossessed, and then didn't let that bother me. I just kept plugging away, plugging away, plugging away, and finally it just started hitting, you know? I mean, people don't understand, like, it, it, it doesn't just come overnight. Like, you, if you're dedicated, it takes, you know, like I tell somebody, you know, can I be successful in real estate? I said, yeah, but just remember, it takes the average consumer 6.7 months to determine to, to buy or sell. Mm. So as long as you have a nest egg of, cover your bills for six months, then yeah, you should be okay. Yeah. But most people just dive right in, which, which is fine. But that's why I worked three jobs. Mm. Hardly slept just to myself, lived off cup and noodle and top ramen and eggs. Mm -hmm. That was about it. I love and that. now I'm here. I love that dude. Yeah. I didn't know that 6.7 months to, yeah, to be for the average person decides mm -hmm. to buy or sell. It's always been. So, I mean, it, it makes sense obviously, right? Cause it, we, everybody's talking about, you know, fortunes in the follow up you know, takes, you know, seven or 10 attempts. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do they say? Seven or 10 attempts to get a, a yeah. deal, something like that. Them, yeah. Right. Um, so, I mean, you, the two and two go perfectly together, you right. know, uh, and you're right. Mo the amount of people that I like, we had a guy recently, I'm trying to think who it was. Anyways, they joined our team, quit his job. And like, I, you know, now I'm a little bit out of that day to day, but I'm always, every time I see that, I'm like, dude, like you should have kept your job, bro. Right. Like you shouldn't have just quit your job like that because you're not going to make it like you're right. 
Hey, real quick, I just want you to do me a huge favor. If you're enjoying the show and you're enjoying all the amazing guests that we've been having on lately, then do me a massive favor and smash the like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you have not already. I would greatly appreciate it. It would mean the world to me, and we will be able to bring on a lot more big names if you help us out. Now let's get back to the show. One, one, you, you'll have the anomaly of, of the person who goes like, I've had agents that join our team and, and they go and close a $7 million deal in week one. Right. Right. But like, it's the anomaly, right? It's not the norm. No. Right. And, uh, to build your book as a realtor in 2023 and beyond, it's going to take time. Yeah. A long time. Well, we, uh, we got out of the relationship business mm -hmm. and we were taught the automation business is what people are by CRM follow up with that, you know, post shit every once in a while, market statistics that no one cares, mm -hmm. put out some stuff that's what's going on this weekend, no one cares, and yep. you just got to get back to the grind. I mean, I have a team out of Sun City I coach. They, co they closed 111 deals last year. Um, currently, they have 23 deals in escrow right now, and everybody's like, the markets, I'm like, they have 23 deals in escrow, and yeah. they've already closed 24. Right. So by Q1, we'll be just shy of, you know, a little over 50 deals already. Yep. So we're trying to hit 200 this year. I love that, dude. And that's in, they're in Sun City. Yeah, so they, so the trick of it is if somebody really wants to understand this, and this is what we, we've we studied, but it's a consistency and you got to put the budget in mm -hmm. instead of, uh, you know, buying leads. They, they basically, in a sense, buy billboards. So they sponsor all the activities in their radius. So mm -hmm. it's a three mile by seven and a half mile radius. They found out an area that if it closes 200 transactions in a month, they can start taking that market share. I think the problem with realtors is they're just all over the board. Like, oh, farm here, farm here, farm here, farm here, run ads, buy leads, cold call, whatever it is, which, you know, is fine. I'm just, I don't coach on any of that. But so we studied it and then obviously it works. And right. they do handwritten cards, uh, client appreciation events. They got a big one coming this week, but they do a lot of community events. Yeah. So it's like you kind of be the, got to be the mayor of your town. And most people aren't, they're too lazy. I always say the more hands you shake, the more money you make, right. you know? So it's all about like, I think people, you, you said it best. Like, I love that. Um, like talk to me a little bit more about that. Like what, you know, what is that? Is that what you would recommend to anybody? Like how do, how do, how does a realtor or a team go out there and dominate in 2023? Is it what you just described or is it? Yeah. It's relationships, man. It's uh, people, people get advice. So most realtors run their business on their time, right? Which you know, they're sick of working for somebody from the nine to five. I'm gonna run my business however I want. But you have to run your business like what a consumer. You have to understand, you have to study your client and your ideal client yourself, right? So you have to be proactive versus reactive. So I tell my clients, I said, look, if you really wanna be successful, you kinda need to wake up at least four or five days of the week at 4.30 yeah. or five, at five at the latest. But we all have to study human characteristic that the first thing we do in the morning is what? Grab our phone. Mm -hmm. So why aren't you liking people's stuff or reacting to their stories or sending them a DM or commenting on their posts so that you have all these people and you create a target list mm -hmm. and then of uh, people that you're engaging with. And, you know, over time, if they're, you're engaging with them, they're going to engage back with you, right? If you're consistent on posting good content. Mm. I think too many realtors, um, quite frankly, look like fucking idiots right now in today's market. Like they're doing TikTok and they look like they got Tourette's. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just pointing out the, the sky like what what are you what are you doing you're not even talking to anybody mm. it's oh because somebody told me that oh when you do reels reels are video the reason reels were created because to compete with tiktok mm -hmm. like they don't study things at all and you know wake up do five handwritten cards a day mm -hmm. i mean when you, you have to understand when you sort your mail do you look at your bills first or if somebody wrote you a handwritten card or sent you a postcard mm -hmm. you look at that stuff first right yep you know so think about human characters or have a great day and and don't call them to just be like Hey, do you know anybody looking about, you know, like these, some brokers do the circle prospecting shit. Dude, if you call me once and then you end the thing, Hey, if you know anybody looking to buy or sell, consider me, I'm never going to answer my phone again. Right. But that's what they're taught. So they're taught really bad mannerisms in a sense mm -hmm. versus just creating a relationship going, Hey, I like your stuff. You like my stuff, but post content that shows who you are, what you like to do, what you're relatable for, like get them to know you in a, in a digital world. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause we can't be everywhere at once, but you can be everywhere at once if you post good content. Right. And I, they're just taught the wrong things, man. I just see too many social media so-called gurus, but some of them will even reach out and they don't even know how to run a business. To yeah. me. They'll ask me questions. I'm like, how are you teaching people stuff? You don't even know how to run a company. Yeah. You know, it's weird to me. They, they just regurgitate stuff, man. I just, I just say, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. 
Postings free, stories are free, text messages are free, send out cards are great. My buddy Jordan Adler is the number one guy in send out cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, people love that. You know, he sent me, I, I did a, a big speaking engagement. And I brought my, I always bring my kids up on stage when I do big ones. And I had a picture with my daughter Savannah and I, held, I was holding her and he sent a, that with a picture frame to my house, which is now framed and in my office. Wow. So every time I see it, what am I thinking of? Yep. It's not an email that he sent like every realtor automates or whatever they try to do. It's like personal. So every day I walk in, I'm like, Jordan sent me that. Mm -hmm. So 365 days when I go into my office every day, I'm, he's living rent free in my head by just sending me $12 worth of, of value item. Right. And I, and I don't think people reinvest back into their business. I, you know, I, I asked a lot recently with some realtors. I said, when you get your commissions, how much you spend on a closing gift? And the average is a hundred dollars. Mm. I said, they just made you $12,000 or 15 or 20. You're going to give them a hundred dollar gift card to Starbucks. Right. And you wonder why you don't get referrals. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they don't, they don't, they're not building relationships and referrals right off the bat. And I have an all about your form that I have them fill out, send them their favorite color. And, you know, just like when you're sending, you yep. had me fill out the form to get to know me or whatever it is. But yeah, we're just not relationship driven anymore. We're no. so transactional. I totally agree, dude. I was at uh, the 10X Growth Con with Grant Cardone recently, and um, Jesse Itzler came. I don't know if you follow Jesse Itzler. He came on the stage with his wife. Yeah. Um, she, Spanx. Spanx, yeah. yeah. And he was talking, dude. He was like, and I, I came back and I told my team, I was like, I really want to do this, you know? He said that when he was building as an entrepreneur, he had a gift girl, like a full-time gift girl. And he's like, I would get, her whole job was to buy people gifts. So like what that meant is he's like, I would go on a podcast, Jesse, okay? Right. He's like, I would go on somebody else's podcast and I'd leave and I would buy them a gift. Right. He's like, you would think that they would buy me a gift, he's, which they wouldn't. But right. you would think they would. But right. he's like, instead of all that, he's like, I would get them a gift. Right. And so he'd call his gift girl. Hey, I, you know, here's here's the person I'm, I need a, uh, a gift for. Right. And he would tell them just a little bit about that person and give them a budget. And they would go and they would personally curate a custom gift. Right. Something that meant something like right. it was it was it wasn't just like you said, a gift card, you know. And I thought it was just the world's best idea. I was like, I mean, obviously the gift girl part is if you're on another level, right? But the, just the idea of gifting, though, in general, like you, a lot of somebody watching or listening can they don't need a gift girl to do that, right? I right? mean, yeah, I, I would tell people if you have a phone, which most people do, mm -hmm. take pictures of the experience of your clients buying the home, mm. and then go to I think it's Shutterfly and go make a custom book and then give it to them because they're always going to have that. Mm. But I think people. I mean, you know, in real estate, dude, it's, you know, first quarter, everybody's getting their awards from 2022. Do you know how many people's numbers I've pulled that haven't even closed a transaction yet in 2023? Wild. But we're the top 1%, though. And that's all they brag about. I sent myself an award, and it said, uh, no one cares. No one cares your percentage. No one cares your ranking. Just work harder. Yep. That was my award that I, I presented that's to true. myself. Because I'm employee of the year, you know? Because mm -hmm. I'm my only employee. Right. So, kind of make things easy. I love that, dude. Yeah. Man, you're I like you're you're speaking my language right now. I feel like we talk about this all day. I want to I want to dive deep into this. Like, what are, what are what are some more things that, and recommendations that you have for realtors? You know, like, what what are realtors doing wrong? I know that like they're doing social media wrong and they're pointing on TikTok and they're they're doing the freaking statistics like the the what to do this weekend in Phoenix, Arizona. I see right. the, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. go, there's this carnival going on and down. Right. They get two like likes right. on the post like. When you go in and you start coaching a team, first of all, I guess, I guess, let me back up. Why, why do, I mean, the, I get that they're getting taught the wrong crap, but do you think that human beings in general are just shy? Like they're, they're becoming introverted. Like they're, mm -hmm. they just want to take the lazy, easy, easiest way out. They want to mm -hmm. automate all their shit. You can't automate your business. Mm -hmm. You can't automate a relationship. I, it's like, I, I tell somebody, if you're dating somebody, you're like, hey, we've got a date, but you have somebody always fill in for you because that's what you're doing with the CRM and an email. Mm -hmm. It's the same way. Yeah, it's not really building a relationship. The number one thing I tell people on on social media to do is, uh, and it's the dumbest shit ever, is why are you friends with other realtors? Because <laughs> if you understand algorithms, which I studied it for forever, dude. I've been studying it for. I I studied when hashtags became live. Mm -hmm. If you post too many photos in a in a in, you know. Like Instagram is different from Facebook, obviously. So Facebook's your, Facebook's going to be your hub, and everybody wants to go to Instagram or whatever, or TikTok. And all my clients, I get all my business through Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have a ton of followers on Instagram and a yep. lot of engagement. But um, I always tell them, I said, the first thing you need to do is delete all your realtor friends. Mm. 
And they're like, well, they're my friends or my colleagues. Well, then go tell them to pay your rent for the next six months and see if they're really your friend. Yeah. And so nobody believed me. And then when I, because I, I used to do these things in, in Arizona that were called boot camps. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote 13 course books on how to do it, like in depth, how it worked. And um, nobody would delete them. And so I had one, one, one lady, Carmen Lance, uh, she did it. And we, we did an interview. And by year, first year, she went from five. So she was always a $5 million producer. Mm -hmm. First year, she deleted all the realtors, went from five to 11. Wow. Then to 13. And by year three, she was a $20 million producer. And she said the first thing she did was delete realtors because algorithms, if you like other realtors posts and comment on other realtors, well, who's going to be in your news feed? Who's mm -hmm. going to be on your friend suggestion mm -hmm. line? And then if, you know, you're already looking stuff up online on real estate, so social media is already telling you because that's how, that's how Facebook and Zillow got in trouble with mm -hmm. each other. You know that, right? Yeah. They got the slap. Mm-hmm. Facebook was selling them the right. leads because they saw people that were looking at it, right? People didn't pay attention to this. When I got sued, I think it was in October 2018. Mm -hmm. That's when Zillow were like, oh, you're Premier. And then they, I told everybody they're going to be your competitor here in Arizona. I got mm -hmm. tore up in a forum here in Arizona with all these realtors. And now I'm like, yep, told you so. I mean, it wasn't so much I told you so. It's just, why would you put reviews on a business page that's not yours? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Like Google My Business, create your own business or... Facebook reviews, like, and then you give them to Zillow, and they know you're the. We, they know historically realtors are the worst at follow up. Mm -hmm. So you just gave your clients all their information of filling out a form with their email and stuff, and then now they can hack because you know if you could run an email list, you could target people online. So that's yep. just what they did, and then they kind of sold each other back on the stuff, mm -hmm. and that's how they, you lose. And realtors, ah, oh, that's not true. And I said, well, then go watch your go watch your interview on my YouTube channel, and yeah, that'll shut you the fuck up real quick, right. Because, I mean, it's dumb, dude. I see them all the time. Oh, my God, great poster. Like, and there's still people that are like, oh, I just can't. I mean, they're my friends. I'm like, they're not your friends. I'm telling you. Like, I thought a lot yeah. of people were my friends when I got into coaching and they were going to support me. And they were the first people to leave me. Mm. Mm -hmm. For sure. I couldn't agree more, dude. I think that, man, I'll tell you, I, 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 love, I love what we're talking about. What, what would you say, the, what, I guess first off, and then we'll go there. What do you think about, like, open houses? I love open houses if you do them right. I mean, I got a system on how I do it. I mean, you blanket it, you farm it, you understand statistics, you understand traffic, the signs. But I always, I always tell people, I'm like, why would you, why would you sit in your own house that's not for sale? Mm. Go sit at a house every day that's for sale that's not yours. Eventually, somebody's going to walk in, right? Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, is you're not going to be distracted. Mm. You can create content there while you're waiting there. You can do handwritten cards while you're bored. You can, you can make phone calls. Mm -hmm. You can work on your transactions that you have. Mm -hmm. Really quick, if you're a real estate agent in the state of Arizona and you're looking to join a phenomenal team, then I would love to have a conversation with you. If you're looking for an incredible culture, you're looking for lead generation, you're looking for transaction coordination, then I would love to have a conversation and see if you would be a great fit for our team, okay? So again, if you're an agent in the state of Arizona, make sure you text the number 480-418 5339, the word agent. Okay, again, 480 418 5339, the word agent. Now let's go ahead and get back to the show. I had somebody, um, she worked for this guy and she got let go recently. And I said, I can see that. Yeah. Closed 18 deals in the last year. He's spending hundred something thousand dollars buying stuff down in uh, Arcadia or whatever. I'm like, he isolated his territory. It's like when, uh, when realtors on Instagram will put, I'm a luxury agent. So now you're telling me you can't sell my, you're too good for to sell my $300,000 house. Or I'm your Scottsdale realtor. Mm -hmm. So you can't do Phoenix? You get what I'm going with this. Yeah. And I mean, if you understand branding and, and everything on your business cards, your, your first and last name, right? Mm -hmm. Why would you name anything else, any of your social media platforms different? Right. I made that mistake. Mm -hmm. I've been it. I've done it, you know, but it doesn't push you out for, when somebody's reviewing you, right? I always tell people, if you want to really know if your brand's good, Google yourself. Mm. And also, if you're going to take advice from, I see these so-called social media or coaches or whatever, they're not getting engagement on social. That's not the coach to have. Because yep. this is where, social media is where you make it or break it in today's society. It's where relationships are born. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how we connected. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't that we called and text, like, this is our first time we've ever met. Yep. And Super cool. Yeah. Would you, but then, but then now we meet, we shake hands, I provide value, you provide value, yeah. and we build a relationship, right? right? And so I think social media, if, if used properly to, to exactly what you're talking about, is it should be used to meet people, but then you got to go meet people. 
Yeah. Like, then you got to go shake their hand. Then yeah. you got to go buy them lunch. Then you got to yeah. go take them out. You got to wine and dine them. You got to buy them a gift. You got to, you know, d- provide value, right? I think people ask for something too soon, too. What do you think about that? Yeah. So when I got into the industry, um, I never asked for the business. I asked how I could earn your business. Mm. And it was interesting to me on, on how I really use social media to my advantage because I have, I have three kids and my oldest, Macy, that's 12 now. Uh, her, her, her mom died a couple years ago, but I've had full custody of her since she was basically two. Mm-hmm. I had no family here at the time, and all my friends, when I was going through this legal custody of her, they all took my exes, oh, he was this and that, and then all of a sudden when I win full custody, they're like, wait a minute. I'm like, yeah. Like, but you see true character yeah. of people when they you know try to pick sides, and I, I would stay neutral when anytime anybody argues, but um, unless somebody's just an idiot. But, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, I learned that I would go. I was new here in Phoenix. I didn't know any agents. This is when agents were in the office, kind of like yeah. what you have going on, which I was like, whoa, there's a lot of people here. Mm-hmm. And I would take all their business cards off the wall and knowing that I'd come back, I'd schedule to where, hey, I'm just going to bring in. I couldn't get in the door with some offices and I was doing home warranty at the time. So I would just bring pizzas. Mm. And so I would I would, I would, would take all their cards and I make sure that I like started liking their posts for two weeks straight, all the realtors in that office. So when I showed up and they walked in, they were paying attention to what I was doing. So when I walked in, we kind of already formulated a relationship, even though we've never met. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't posting, you know, I made the mistakes on, and I look back, I like the memories that you see in, in social where I was getting like three likes per post on mm-hmm. Facebook. Now I get hundreds. Um, but it's, uh, it's just interesting that people understand like, dude, if you have a target list, you have an agenda and you're consistently doing it, it's free. Yeah. Like these people that pay people to run ads and do stuff, which I think if you do it correctly by running, you know, YouTube sync, you know, video, whatever, then it works. But these people are just thrown shit out the wall thinking it's going to stick and they're going to get all these deals. Well, you're getting the same leads as everybody else. Right. Like I had one of my clients today. He's like, Hey, what do you think about this? I'm like, I go, Mark, think about this. If you can get this list, do you think anybody else can get this list? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, does that make <laughs> sense? He goes, no. And, but I said, but what do you have? You have people that you know that have bought and sold with you mm-hmm. and they know people you don't know. You just haven't been proactively getting to those people. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, if you're dating someone or whatever, you're going to go look them up on their profile, right? And you're going to stalk them. You're going to look at their photos. You're going to see who they're friends with. You're going to see what their acquaintances are, what they like to do. But, I mean, that's that's a phone book. Yep. People don't use social media as a phone book. They, you know, back in the day when we did cold calling or whatever, we just literally opened up the white pages, mm-hmm. knew their address, knew their first initial, and then if, if it was their full name and last name, and just started calling. But nowadays, people tell you their relationship, what they like to do, where they've worked, where they lived, where they went to school. Yep, 100%. You said a little while ago, if you do open houses the right way, you love them. Right. What is the right way to do an open house? Is there, I hear some people talk about like the mega open house. I hear some people talk about, you know, do them only on the weekend. Like don't do them during the week. I hear some people talk about, everybody's got this freaking theory. I, I agree. Right? I agree. Like what is your theory or, or what do you believe i, I think the, the first mistake on open house and I, I, we kind of going back thank you bringing us back but yeah uh, you're good um they they get too salesy it's like mm. when you go to a car lot they're like what brings you in here today mm. no, i'm just looking but so my strategy is i said as soon as somebody walks into your open house compliment them mm. hey dude nice shoes yeah hey, nice shirt hey nice car it's beautiful outside like take the anxiety down because they already feel anxiety thinking that you're going to try to Mm-hmm. You know, and then they, you know, sign in. Yeah, that's fine. You can do it. But then, you know, have have some stands up. Yep. Have some water. Have some swag that they can take. Sure, refreshments. Um, get a brand at you. Whatever you're trying to do. But they have to understand. People love to give opinions, mm-hmm. and so you got to figure out like how do I sway them in a way? Like you can have. I always tell people get an open house card that says like curb appeal, paint. You know, whatever to give their opinion. Yard you know, price, what do you think? So you can say, hey, I'm gonna give this back to the seller. Yep. What you're doing is you're gathering data of what your potential clientele might have that if you follow up going, hey, I know what they want now. Mm-hmm. And then on a clipboard or on that piece of paper, you're like, hey, let's connect on social. I'd love to be part of you. QR codes are great now. They weren't great way back, you know, years ago, but now, you know, when we had the the pandemic or whatever they wanna call it, they, uh, they came back to life, right? Mm-hmm. And just get them to engage with you. like. Stop getting them to fill out a form so that you can text them yeah. or video. And I have some clients be like, oh, I video text everybody. I'm like, I, I never watch that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, just send me a text. Like, I don't need a phone call. I don't need whatever. Like, 
if you get their information, send them a handwritten card. Mm -hmm. Like, just keep it a relationship. Hey, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know time is valuable, but appreciate you sending by Open House. And it's thank you for so much for filling out this form. If there's anything I can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah. And instead, they're like, oh, are you looking? Or I mean, yeah, they're looking. They're at a house, dude. Yeah. Like, this is, but that's where they screwed up, right? And there's, sure, you can farm it, and there's certain flyers that might attract things. But I think like a, like a flyer that I've learned when I've, I've watched people that there are coaches will talk about making an open house, and their flyers look like shit. Mm. Because when you hold a flyer, your thumb's in the top right-hand corner, right? So your call to action should be right there. And it should just say, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Happy to help you. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, it should be like, hey, I'd love to connect with you on social media. Yep. And then now you're giving them a choice. But this is where agents screwed up is that if they don't have what they say handles named correctly or they're private, I, I realtors that have their shit on private or I have to request to follow you, what are you hiding? Terrible. Terrible. Worst thing you can do. So that's one of the techniques, too. It's like, but these people that say they didn't open houses, they don't touch base on that. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that when a consumer comes to you, you got you to gotta kill the uh, the anxiety and, and create the calmness by giving a calmness. It's funny because every time I go see my buddy Pat Hickey, he always says something smart ass to me when I walk in. But, you know, just kill the vibe. Yeah. You know, what have you been up to? And we sit, we hang out, we go to lunch all the time. But we talked about that. He said, he goes, if you take the philosophy of buying a car and treat it like an open house or any real estate deal, you get him in there. So open houses are very similar to selling a car. Yeah, very. So you get them, it's, it's you know, what color. Mm -hmm. They didn't want modern, they didn't want round cabinets, black cabinets, they want a pool, big pool, hot tub. These are all amenities that go the same thing along with the car. Mm -hmm. And you get them to massage them of, of like, hey, you got to feel it, you got to yeah. touch it, you want to drive this one, you want to drive this one, you want to do this. And then, you know, at the end, he goes, you know, now let's talk price. Because now if you get them to fall in love with it, right? he goes, dude, you'll have the brokest people in the world that will find three grand from anywhere to yep. put down on a down payment. For sure. If they fall in love with it, you have to make them fall in love with the process. They have to. And where open houses or whatever it doesn't is they're not making them fall in love with the process. They're making them fall in love with the transaction. Mm. And so then they're out. transactional, not relationship. Yep. So if you're relationship driven, it always come around. Like I knew in the market for me, I was going to dip a little bit on, on, on signing up. But now my phone's coming back to where I'm blown up. But I have more bigger, higher tickets where people want personal, more one-on-one -on -one coaching, mm -hmm. which is, you know. 10, 20 times the amount of what I, what I charge on the other one. But it's, people get scared. Like you said, I, I don't think it's scared. They just, they just, they're lazy. They don't want to like read relationship books or listen to podcasts or mm -hmm. they want to just hang out with other realtors and bitch about life or right. people that aren't going to take them somewhere. But yes, I mean, open houses, treat it as you're selling a car. Think about when you bought your car and why you bought that car. Yep. And that's how I would formulate an open house a little bit better too. For sure. If you were a realtor, like, let's just say you're a newer realtor. What would what would a day look like for you? Like, would you would you say you like, let's just say you've got ten or twelve hours to work with, right? In a day, mm -hmm. would you would it like be like four hours at an open house? Like, you wake up, like you said, at four thirty five o'clock in the morning. You do handwritten. Like, what what would a day look like? Yeah, I mean, wake up early. You know, be thankful that you got another day. Um, don't go to the gym until like ten or three in the afternoon when people are you know where they're at. I think. I would realtors don't go to the gym in the morning. Okay. Like I get, that's what you want to do until you're established. Like that's when you grind before your phone. Like you have to figure out your critical tasks that need to be done before your phone rings. So when I was taught, it would goes, when your phone starts ringing, you need to be up three hours prior because you can get more done in that three hours than you can in, in 12. Mm. Cause the moment your phone rings and you get distracted mm -hmm. and in real estate, we're easily distracted, happy hours, free shit, whatever it is. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Wake up, make your post, mm -hmm. engage with people. People say, hey, I don't have many friends. You know, it's real easy. It's called follow and add friends. Like, that's how you create it. Super simple. That's what I did down here. And then, you know, journal. I'd say journal. Um, the one thing I'd say is chart when you wake up, when you go to bed. Chart your activities for 90 days. Uh, chart your phone calls for 90 days. Who's calling you, what they're talking to you about, how long the phone conversation was. So you know the types of phone calls you need to avoid because me mindset is everything. And I found out through one of my buddies, John Galford, he made me do that. And uh, it really changed my, my mindset because I was taking so many phone calls of negative people. Mm. And then, then I'm in a, now I'm pissed because they're pissed, you know? And so I stopped taking phone calls. Um, text messages, um, find out the people that are telling you, hey, I want you to win. So, so formulate that. Um, track your likes, track your engagement, track your views. Um, build a damn YouTube channel, number one. Build that right away. What find, would you be doing on YouTube? Your, your, you know, a buyer and a seller playlist, okay? 
your top 10, 15 questions that you have there in a transaction. Like, how do I DocuSign? What's, what is the contract? Break down the contract. What's an earn of some money deposit? What, what, what's the process of an escrow? Mm -hmm. What's a home inspection? What's an appraisal? Mm -hmm. Because if you have these, okay, you never have to repeat yourself ever again. Mm -hmm. Like my training platform has 400 plus videos in it, right? On from traditional to social media marketing, it literally says this button will do this, this button will do that. Mm -hmm. I had a client the other day, is it ever outdated? I said, no, because if you look at Facebook the other day, they try to change how you post it, and it didn't work for a day, and that went back to the old ways, right? <laughs> yeah. They do it all the time, right? Yep. So in that way, to have to no, just keep it simple. So I would I would do that. I YouTube number one, I build that because it helps you uh, get a Google My Business page, have people just write reviews for you right away at the beginning, whether you sold a house or not. Just have them write about like ethics, who you are as a person, um, why they would choose you, and then you know it's going to push it out there because we get so many reviews just on when we sold the home. Mm. Get a review on who you are. Like if you look at my reviews, people tell you like I'm no nonsense. Yep. I don't don't give me your violin bullshit. Like all the stuff that I've been through with my daughter and I before I got remarried with my other two kids. I mean, that kid's got something like she should be a mess, but right. I kept her out of it, right? Yeah. But I mean, it's just yeah, I mean, just keep it simple. But if you track your time mm -hmm. and who you give your time to, I think the number one mistake that realtors when they first get in the business is they get so many advice from so many people pull their numbers, mm -hmm. but also see how much they work. Mm -hmm. Cause there's a lot of people that'll do 20 million and they're making 200,000. Yep. Right. And it's because they automate it. They don't have the systems. They're not building it out. They're not getting through. We don't get 3% anymore. Mm -hmm. That's going to go away. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be, I mean, I, I do events all the time. I'm like, tell me why I would pay you 20 grand to sell my house mm -hmm. when I have to wait for you to call me back. Right. And then just study your, study your client when they wake up, what they move, because everybody's going to have a different audience. Right. But we research things mostly at what time? Night. Mm -hmm. So you need, you need content, man. You got to have it out there. You got to, not the stupid TikTok shit or whatever that is. Like, have good content. Like, just talk to people. Like, hey, have a great day. Hey, guys, just want to have a great message. All your stuff does not have to be real estate related. Mm -hmm. It can be what you like to do a video. It could be, you know, I showed up on my Harley today. I'm leaving right after. I normally trimmed up my beard, but I'm like, and, uh, but I'm like, it's cold, you know, <laughs> but it's, uh, it yeah, I mean, day. it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not rocket science. I just think they get too much advice and they go to, you know, I don't, I don't want to knock on it. Cause like I started, you know, with my industry and the title, but there's too many, there's, there's not, I don't, there's a few good ones, but they give too much advice yeah. and all they do is run around and I'm like, they don't know anything. They cater open houses and they host events and they're paying for your business or joint ventures or MSAs or whatever. That's no value. Yep. I always tell somebody, if I'm going to take advice from somebody, show me your paycheck. Mm -hmm. Show me how much money you live and the lifestyle you live. Yep. Like, I work 40 hours a month building my stuff mm -hmm. so I can hang out with my kids. I could push more, but I'm not going to get seasons back with my kids. Yep. What are they going to remember is my dad worked all the damn time mm -hmm. and never was around. So, I mean, that's why I, I, I quit the title industry. Yeah. Just walked in one day and quit. My son was three months from being born. Mm -hmm. Literally quit. I had a big, nice salary at the time and quit. For yeah. sure. You, you, you said uh, you were talking about 3% going away, right? And, and that not being the norm. And I love what you said about, I ain't going to pay you 20 grand to sell my house when I got to wait for you to call me back, right? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think the direction of that is going with, with everything going on in the world and technology? Like, do you, I'm, I'm already obviously, as you're, you're seeing, you know, 2.5% is very normal now. Mm -hmm. Um, it's actually it's when keep I, dropping. Yeah. When I see 3%, I'm like, Whoa, it's 3%, you right. know, like, wow. You know, right. what, where do you think, what do you think it looks like in, I don't know, five or 10 years? Well, I mean, if you study these people that have been in the industry for a long time, they're dying right now because mm -hmm. they're not adapting. I told you they, it's 2023. We're in the market, like where it's 2018, you know, kind of numbers statistically, but they're marketing like it's 2013. Mm -hmm. They're still buying leads and and so, which I, I'm not opposed to that, dude. If you don't have it, like I, I get it. But if you have 500 Facebook friends, you have 500 warm leads every day. You just don't do anything with it, right? Yeah. 500 followers, you have 500 friends. I just think the value is not there. But I mean, you look at the high buyer campaigns that try to mm -hmm. shorten, stiffen it, and now they're hurting. Yep, they're dying right now, big time. But we were also worried about the high buyer. Well, they were worried because they had a team of people versus year one. But the one thing that you could beat them on was relationships, and you never pivoted to that because you want to 
somebody tells you to buy a CRM or automate your shit. I dude, I watch people. I've got lady I used to try to coach, man. She was she's not coachable, man. She tries to go to all these events, and I'm not gonna drop her name, but you know, you got eight nine people on your team, and you've closed eighteen million mm-hmm. with nine people. Yep. And you've been in the industry twenty years. You should, you should be closing like 50, 60 million at least. Mm-hmm. But tries to automate everything, and I said you can't automate a relationship. You have to stop doing that. And as soon as the market shifted from when it was the best two years, those people that ran their business that way were the first people to die. Mm-hmm. Their business just died. And people will ask my, my clients, a lot of them that follow my trans, they're busier than they've ever been, actually. They're busier than they were during, like, the best two years. And people are asking me, like, why? I'm like, because they have content. Mm-hmm. They have a YouTube channel built out. They have a great website. And when they go to their website, it's not to search for homes. Mm-hmm. The ones that I tell them to be a lot right, they have a video literally when they go to their website. So website is not people aren't going to search for homes there. It's to find information. Mm-hmm. And so they have a video literally pops up and just talks about who they are. Mm. Just want you to meet me. That's why I got into real estate. This is what I do for you. This is a little bit about me. It's like kind of my family or my dogs or whatever it is. I want you to get to know me and then click the button. Mm-hmm. But people don't do that. They just are like, they're thinking they're going to go to your, they're going to fill out this form and give you their email and whatever. They don't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen anymore. Like when you check out of a grocery store and they're like, hey, you have a chance to win 10 grand. You know you have a chance to win 10 grand. Right. But you still don't fill out the form. Mm-hmm. People don't want to give you their information because you spam them. Yeah. Shit, dude, I have Van Chevrolet here, and I probably told them 30 times to take me off their calling list. And I know they're GM. I'm going to call them probably today. <laughs> they call me again. I'm like, I've unsubscribed from their email list 20 times. I'm like, who is running your shit, Mr. Van Tile? Like, what is going on over there? <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, it's just just got to get back to the basics, man. Yeah. The old school with a little bit of traditional and a little bit of social media and learn that social is to be socially engaging with people, not mm-hmm. socially selling someone. Yeah. And realtors use it to just sell their shit. Mm -hmm. I don't. I put myself in my stories. I don't make posts about signing up for my coaching. I use my stories. So you have to understand the balance of where you put stuff. What do you think about the brokerage model and the team model? We're seeing so much change right now um, in that world, I feel like, right? And and the the big, the reels and the, I'm with EXP now. Uh, I was with my home group for six or seven years. Then I I moved. Right. Um, but the brokerage model and the team model, like, what do you what do you think the future is of that? I've I've heard different different things. I mean, people switch brokerages because they think that there's going to be a shiny tool there that's going to the brokerage isn't going to create your success. You create your success. Mm-hmm. I think you have to find a team if you want to go on a team that fits your mantra of like who you are and culture and fun and you know. But I see a lot of teams, man. I saw some teams the other day. I'm like, everything they're doing, like, oh, we have fun team activities. I'm like. But none of you are selling homes. You're not making any money. Like you have these people coming in that are talking about that they were at Inman that are going to talk about the same shit. Like how many market reports can you go to that are going to tell you the market? Like, right. dude, we get it. But in any market, people buy and sell homes. I had somebody tell me, it's like, I can't remember who said it, but it said, even in a tornado, a turkey can fly. <laughs> yeah. Even in a tornado, a turkey can fly. And people say, oh, that's, it, you know, it's hard where we're at right now. I'm like, it's not hard. You just made it hard because mm-hmm. you didn't want to do critical tasks. So all the things that you neglected because you were so busy are now coming to haunt you. Mm-hmm. When all the things that I've built, I've had more conversations to planting seeds and been in front of more people in these last, I'd say, five, six months than I did the last couple of years. Because, you know, I, I, I did a um, had the same class in March of 2022, and I had like 53 RSVPs on a Zoom. I did the same class 90 days ago and had 179 RSVPs and marketed it out the same way because that just shows you that three times they're not agents. They're scared. My classes are booked up. It's funny. My my wife just became a title rep to do that. (laughs) She's, she just got in the industry and I told her, I'm like, you just, you still got about 90 days or so to really learn some stuff. I said, obviously with your husband being who he is, people are already sending their deals, you know, because they want time, but um, she's realizing it's, it's harder than, you know, she gets it, yep. and I think you need to be relatable. And I'm not coddling her. Mm-hmm. I've made some phone calls to help her out, you know, but I, I don't coddle her. I said, look, when you have the skill set built and you're good in 90, 120, I'll start going around with you, and I'll help you a little bit more, and I'll close people for you. I'll help you. I'll show you, and then you're going to go do it. I'm going to sit there, and I'm going to watch. Yep. I think that for the team model, and that is the same philosophy to flex that. I think they need a mentor. They need to, they need to be an apprentice for a while. Mm-hmm. I think people just get in this, and they – 
they're trying to replace their sixty thousand dollars that they made a year or seventy or eighty, and I could sell five homes and I'm done. I mean, that's their mentality. Yep. That's why the average agent what closes five deals in a year. I didn't even think it was that high. I, I think it's about five. Is it? Okay. Yeah, four to five. Um, so they're just replacing their income, but they don't have to work for anybody. Like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. You're not an entrepreneur when you're not. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But um, I, I mean, it's it's kind of like a double edged sword. I mean, I don't think where the brokers. I think splits are important. I don't think brokers offer a lot of good training anymore. No, they don't. I mean, I see people, like I see you guys, you guys do a lot of Zoom shit, but it's the same shit. Mm -hmm. Like literally teach me something. But I see it in anywhere. Yeah. Like it's, you can only get the cheerleading convention for so long. Yeah. And that's what I think about a lot of these events that people go to. It's like, I'm so pumped, man, the motivational speech, whatever. You still have to wake up and do the shit they told you to do. That's the hard part. Yep. Like people will be like, oh, you, they, they'll read books. And I'm like, well, what did you learn? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what are you going to implement? I'm going to do this. Okay, well, let's see it. And then they can't do it. Yeah. Like my daughter wrote a business plan on why I had to pay for her dance at 11. Mm -hmm. And most people don't even have a business plan. So the other thing for new agents, I would tell them this, write daily, weekly, and monthly goals. Mm -hmm. No longer than that when you first get in the business because everybody's going to tell you, oh, you want to close five, 10 million, whatever it is. And if you track those daily, weekly, and monthly goals, you can't be beat. Yeah, I love that. People join teams and they all, well, real, I guess really any, are the people who get into real estate like agents, you know, they're, they're so focused on what's the split. I hate that, bro. Yeah. I hate that more than anything in the yeah. world. With, I'm, I'm at a point where if somebody sits down in my conference room and they, and the first thing out of their mouth is what's the split. I'm like, dude, there's the door right there, bro. Like I, Brian North called me the other day and uh, Brian North, um, he referred me a guy by the name of Clayton. Um, and anyways, I guess I'll just say it live, but Clayton's, uh, from the bachelor and he just joined our team and he's a real good dude. Um, but Brian calls me and he took his advice to Clayton was dude, when you, when you sit down with a team leader or broker, instead of asking that question, ask what the value is in exchange 100%. for this split, right. not what's the freaking split, bro. Right. Because and what irritates me, I think about it, is that they're concerned about this 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 percentage, and really, it's like okay, if you were gonna be able to, let's just say, make eighty grand a year on mm -hmm. your own, right? But now you come to my team, and it's a freaking ninety ten ninety me ten you, but I get you to make two hundred grand a year. Doesn't matter what the split is. They don't. They don't see that. I I just made you double the amount of money you were gonna make solo, right? So right. I think like what what would you have to say to that? Well, I mean, I see a lot of people that and teams are getting ruined right now in a sense because there's too many people that did the five to 10 million that are now mm. sucking on the vine of those people. Mm. And they, oh, we're going to bring like eight people on our team. Mm -hmm. But they don't really even know what they're doing. They don't even have their systems. They don't have the con. They don't, all the things that I talk about you need first when I, mm -hmm. like, you know, first agent, they don't even have it. And they just get so smoked in mirrors going, oh, I want to make 150 mm -hmm. grand. I want to make 200 grand. And I don't think it's, I, I always tell people on my teams, I say, look, Quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. But I say before you hire someone, this is the best advice you can give to anybody. Have them write out what their job description is. Because mm. that's what they're going to commit to when they join you. Mm -hmm. The problem I see with teams or brokerages, they tell you what you're going to do for them. Mm -hmm. You, If you find out, collect data of like, they might be good at certain things. You can find out what they're not good at. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you're good at social. You're good at this. You're good at whatever. Everybody always says I'm so good at social, yeah. whatever. But hey, will you film video? Will you do this? Okay. Well, then you find out like that common ground of going, okay, thank you for filling this out. Mm -hmm. Here's the value my team's going to bring you. Yeah. Okay. I see you're not good at video. I see you're not good at this. Hey, we've got staging. Hey, you want to, we got this. Hey, we got this. Hey, we got, we got a TC. Hey, we've got, you're not good at paperwork. We got a paperwork. What, you're good at showing homes. You're good at open houses. Awesome. We have listings. So we're going to be compatible. And then you get these team hoppers because the teams don't structure their business mm -hmm. that way. They're just, they're just trying to get people under them to make money. Yeah. It's like, it's, it, you know, it's no difference in EXP. It's like a downline form in a yep. sense. It doesn't matter where you're at. Yep. They're just trying to do, now the team leads trying to do less work to make money off them because they're like, oh, I'm going to give them one of my leads. Or I did, like I said, the same chick. She's like, oh, I, I'm going to do these things and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them all these leads and have all these leads. I'm like, you don't even make the calls. So the other thing that I would tell the difference of the, the teams is like, if you're going to tell somebody to do it, you better be doing that shit every day. Mm -hmm. Don't be a dictator. Yep. Don't be a team lead. And I, and I tell people, they don't work for you. You guys work together yep. because they're doing something that you don't want to do. 
you've been there, you've done that, so you know how to make the mistakes. Just like me, it's trial and error. Like I've learned through the things of, you know, that's like you said, a great question on the teams. I would say, would I say today, what I said three, four years ago? No. Mm-hmm. I'd say, yeah, get 30 people on your, you know, 10 are producing, you got 20, then you know, you just cycle it. And then I'm like, now I'm like, sometimes three is more than, better than 30. For sure. Three is you know? probably a whole hell of a lot more profitable too. Uh, yeah, because time, mm-hmm. time into people. And yeah. people don't understand that. Like, yeah, it's just like how much time you committed to, you know, whatever it is. And um, my buddy, uh, Andy Haibaka, they, they own the big air conditioning mm-hmm. around here. And uh, his dad's like, no bullshit, dude. It's pretty funny. He tells me the story. He goes, when they go to hire someone mm-hmm. and they're going to drive around their trucks, right? In the interview, they walk out to the person's car to see how clean it is. Mm. In the interview. Yeah, they're like, because if their car looks like a complete shit bomb, he's like, so are you going to treat our vehicles that we pay for like this? Mm. Wow. Like, pay attention to how people take care of themselves, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Because there's always the smoke and mirrors where, you know, the people, you could go, you go, you know, somebody could dress to the nines and you go to their house and it looks like a bomb went off. Right. Remember when I did home care respiratory therapy? I, I, went, <laughs> I would go to some nice million-dollar homes, and I was like, I, I mean, I, there was sometimes I couldn't even go in the house. Wow. It was so bad. Wild, bro. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, I mean, just teams and brokerages, I, they just have to have the work ethic. But mm-hmm. the job description thing has really helped my clients a lot. Be like, hey, before we just, just show me, send me what you think your job description is going to be. And then you know instead of, but I think we just dictate too much of like, go do this, go do this, go do this, go do this, instead of finding out like, hey, these three people are going to be a good team together. You guys stay together. You three over here. Mm-hmm. And you three right here. Because you guys kind of all filled out the same form. So you guys are going to work well together. And then after 30 days, we're going to swap one to the other. Mm-hmm. And then now you're going to help the skill set. It just flows. Yep. Because you got to, when people first start on a team, you have to make them comfortable. And if they're around people that are like minded like them, they're going to be better comfortable. Well, then you got to take them out of their comfort zone a little bit. So then that's, that's how I would do it. Yeah, for sure. No, I think you have to do I think a lot of team leaders just built teams the wrong way. I think that's part of the problem, too, right? You said it best, but. Um, and then it puts a bad taste in, in people's mouth. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that's a problem, right? Because then what happens is, is I have an agent that'll walk in here and they think that I run my team the way that the, te- the, way that the team leader ran the team that they just came from. Right. And I'm like, and they're, they're telling me about the way that guy ran it. And I'm like, dude, I don't run my thing anything like what you're talking about. So I would but never now they hire don't believe me, that. right? I'd never hire somebody that way. Mm. It's like relationships. Mm-hmm. Like if you break up with somebody and then you go on another date, and you're talking bad. Well, the first thing we do is like, oh, it didn't work because this, 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 and you know, whatever. Okay, but what wasn't there? Was there anything good about it? Mm-hmm. Like, because you guys, you know, it's like people break up, you know, social media. One yeah. day they're in love, and the next day all the photos are removed, and mm-hmm. oh, he's an asshole, or she's an asshole, or he cheated on me, or did whatever. Well, I mean, you kind of thought you were the king shit. Why did he cheat on you? Why did he leave you? Why didn't he go to the extra mile? Why isn't he doing the notes? Why isn't he? And people don't look at that that way. We're in such a sculpted society that like by 18 you're going to meet adult 21 you can drink 62 to 65 you can retire your your nine to five is going to dictate the house you live in and the cars that you buy and, and the travel that you can do and what your kids can afford and how they're going to be why don't you just change the mold a little bit mm-hmm. and be your own self and find your own niche and stop going to a team well i think a lot of teams over promise and under deliver because they're like oh we got these we're going to cold call we're going to do all these things we got all these things I think it's good for people to learn a skill set to be on the phone. Mm-hmm. I do. But they also need to learn to open houses and the in the trenches and the contractual work and understanding people and, and handwritten, you know, handwritten cards go a long ways and mm-hmm. just but I mean, yeah, I mean I plus I'd research their social too. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a no bullshit. I say I say whatever I want, but for I sure. but I've earned that too. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of right there with you, dude. I think like we've got you saw my office. Today's yeah. a light day. You know, yeah. we'll walk out there. There'll be more people, I guarantee you, out there when we walk out right. than when you walked in, you know? Right. And, um, dude, it's just, uh, we just we, we do what we say we're going to do. I'm, I, I'm on social. I post on social media 10 times a day, every day of my life, you know? I yeah. tell everybody else to do that. We have yeah. some of the best people in the game. We're one of the biggest wholesalers in the nation. You right. know, on the retail side, we have 45 agents, and, you know? Right. And I don't think we're, and, and I think we're, where we succeed is I think I'm a nobody. Every morning I wake up, bro, I, I think yeah. I haven't done anything. I've got to grind. Like today we're going to make a video. I haven't even told Jacob yet, but I'm going to go cold call agent. I was doing it last night at like 8 o'clock at night here with my partners, but I was cold calling agents on the MLS, you know, looking for investment properties, right? And I'm going to go do that, and I'm going to film myself doing it. Right. And then I'm going to post it on YouTube, and then I'm going to send it to my whole team. Let me ask you a question, though. 
When do you turn it off? That's the problem right now. I don't. But I'm young. How old I'm are you? 27. So I'm 42. Yeah. And my my daughter, I talk a little bit about my daughter. I was like talking about it, bring her out in the podcast. Talk about her, yeah. So she's 12. She's amazing. And I got I got my daughter Savannah, my son Colby. He, he's my stud. He's he's a funny fucking kid, dude. That kid. <laughs> he's a he's 4? He's 4. Okay, yeah. He's he's hilarious, but my daughter you know, her mom was a good mom, dude. She, you know, until she got to the drugs and alcohol. Mm. And she became a prostitute and almost drowned in the pool with my kid. And, you know, she has an older brother and sister, like half brother and sister. That I, you know, they, they live here, but they don't come see her. I was hopefully they listen to this podcast. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got a car, you can drive, right? Mm-hmm. But I sculpt my life around my daughter because she went through a lot and does not complain. Mm. And I think society, we just complain about everything. Oh, this coffee's too hot. Or, oh, they didn't make it to where it is. Oh, my food's this. Or, oh, I'm not living my life. Or, oh, they just wake up negative. And I wake up every day and I look at my daughter and I'm just like, I am so proud of you. Because mm. you could be a complete logistical nightmare of, like, mental stuff. But I made her strong. I didn't, I don't coddle her, but she's very well rewarded. She doesn't have to ask for anything. She literally just screenshots it to it. But um, I just think people just don't appreciate life anymore. Mm. And uh, when I when I quit the title company, I walked in and I just thought I'm like I'd come home and um, you don't have kids yet, but you'll mm-hmm. you'll notice. I have a fiance. I was bringing my work home with me, mm-hmm. so that's when I asked, "When do you turn it off?" Mm. And I, you know, I was not in a good relationship, not a good head spot. Probably drinking a little bit, maybe too much at that time, because I, you know. But then I looked at my daughter and I'm like, "Fuck, this kid has been through what I would never want any kid to go through," and she's just straight A student scholar she's gonna do some big shit Mm -hmm. i always told her i'm like you'll be bigger than your daddy will ever be but the hardest win that i ever had was my five-year-old savannah so for over a year i would ask her if she was my babe and she said no i love mom Mm. so i come home one day from a trip from vegas and i got flowers i love telling the story because i walk in she's sitting there and uh, I can still remember just coming in the door. And this is, guys, this is important because this helps you in life to realize the purpose of you making the money that you do and going to work. And, and it's not the transaction, it's the relationships you build, but it's also the relationships of the fans that you don't see that who are your fans. Mm. And at that point, I didn't realize that I wasn't doing things that I needed to do. So I walk in with these flowers. My daughter goes, Daddy, for me? And I'm like, am I your babe? And she goes, yes. I'm like, fuck, yes, they are for you. Give them right to her. And then every time I traveled for the next six months, every week I was gone, I would send her flowers to the house. Mm-hmm. And she already knew when she got there, she'd get home from school or whatever she was, and she's like, my babe sent me these. Mm-hmm. And it got so much that, like, she wouldn't even let my wife sit next <laughs> to me or hug me or whatever. Now, you know, it's whatever. But she, she loves me. And then my son's just my son, dude. He's my yeah. dude. But I, I just want to touch on that because I think we lose the sight of, like, when I look at realtors or whatever, post their awards. And... You know, I ask them, and I'll say, well, how many, how many trips did you go on with your kids? How much time do you spend with your kids? Because people will be like, oh, you travel a lot, whatever. I'm like, yeah, but when I'm home, I spend more time with my kids in a day. Like, I'll get in with coaching calls, and I'll go upstairs, and me and my son will play blocks, or we have Nerf gun wars, mm-hmm. or I take my daughters to, you know, on dates, or hang out with them, and we color, and we grill, and we bark, whatever it is. But just stop stop working, man. I mean, yeah. I, I, I just... I mean, there's so many big entrepreneurs out there in our space, and I'm like, all you do is work. Mm-hmm. And my dad's 74, and I got him to retire. I'm retiring my mom this year. Mm-hmm. My first purchase that I bought when I made it, I bought my mom, well, my stepmom a car. I don't talk to my biological mother anymore. Um, but I bought my stepmom a car, and I bought, my, I bought my dad a vehicle too. So I owned their cars and bought them that because they were my, they were, they, they've had my back since day one. I remember when I was broke, and I remember when I had bad credit and when I was starting shit because I maxed out all my credit cards, dude. And I and I and I needed a car. Obviously, I could afford it, but when you max out all your stuff, your credit drops, right? Mm-hmm. My mom had eight. I'm like, hey, mom, can you just go sign? And she had no problem. Yeah. You know, buy me a hundred thousand dollar Mercedes that I had. You know, and I'm not too prideful to ask for that because I knew that in the end, like I was in a like, I saw my credit cards. Like, mm-hmm. what do you want me to do? My credit well, it used to be, you know, seven eighty. But when you do that, you're down to like a six forty, six thirty mm-hmm. at that time, right? But I know I think people are just too prideful to ask for help. Mm. So. I mean, if you say like the brokerage, the whatever it's trying to be in any real estate, like what's the first thing anybody to do is like, don't be too prideful to ask for help. In any area of life. Any area, man. Relationships, gym, health, mindset, mm-hmm. what book to read, what podcast, what music to listen to. I mean, that's why people, if they listen to this, is helping people, right? Yep. But also remember, 
that you have a supporting cast that's out there that needs help too and don't make, you know, and I lost that for a little bit. I, you know, you, you get so, I got so wrapped up in the work that one day I was just like, holy shit, dude, like work's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Like I need to, I need to focus a little bit more on that. Like all my buddies that are in town from Cali, we're riding and meeting up and I think you have to send standards too, but I also think in the relationship side, why people don't really make it in real estate is their significant other, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Wow. It's, I, I couldn't agree more. I think I think a lot of people got some shitty people that they're dating or they're married to, bro. Mm -hmm. If you want to understand, you want to think the number one reason why people fail. Like if you are married to somebody and they want you to win, dude, they they should like help you get up if you can't get up. Like I, I had one of my clients said it. He's like, oh, I told my wife I need to do this, and I brought my wife over. I said, hey, have you ever had to get me out of bed? Mm -hmm. No. Have you ever told me to go to work? No. You ever told me at 2.30 in the morning when I'm filming content because I just wake up because that's just what I do because my phone's not going to be disturbed. So people say, like, what do you do? Like, bro, when I'm going to film content, mm -hmm. it, I'll do it at, like, 1.30 or 2.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because my phone's not going off. Right. And it's better lighting, yep. I think, you know. And I tell people, like, when I first did videos, it wasn't good lighting or whatever. Just to show people it was just a video, dude. It doesn't yeah. have to be perfect. The other thing in real estate, I think, in people's life, they, they try to make it too perfect, man. Mm. You're always going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. You're going to fuck up every day. Yep. Just learn from it. That's every what I day. tell people, man. It's just, that's what I learned from being a dad with my, with my daughter and stuff like that. That taught me is that like, she just, they love you for you. Mm -hmm. Just, but you got to be selfish too. Mm -hmm. I I learned that mistake too, is that, you know, when people write out their goals, like personal goals, they're like, Oh, I want to take a family on my trips and I want to buy this car. And I, you know, I want to do more things with my family, but it's, those aren't personal goals. Those are family goals. Mm -hmm. A personal goal is what do you want. Yeah. And it's always, oh, I want to lose 30 pounds. I want to, no, 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 that's, everybody wants that. But what do you want? Like for me, I wanted to go play golf again and be able to hang out and not mm -hmm. have somebody up my ass about doing stuff or whatever, but like enjoy life for me. Cause I, I worked my whole life for, I would say 37 and a half, 38 years for everybody else. And now I'm living my best life mm -hmm. and I'm actually making more money than I ever have, you know, cause I stopped obviously making money for somebody else you know, but also like I'm happy mm -hmm. and people don't like that. Do you know how many people are like, Oh, he's cocky, whatever it is. No, I'm fucking happy, dude. This is what <laughs> happiness looks like. <laughs> Confident enough to be like, fuck you too. Yeah. Like it's not hard to be happy and people yeah. camouflage our, our, our self through success or whatever it is, or our appearance. You know, I could be like, Oh my gosh, I'm in a flannel. Cause, but I'm riding my Harley. Like yeah. this is my life. Mm -hmm. Chose to do a podcast during bike week. So I'm like, Coming on my Harley. Like, yeah. that's just what it was going to be. I love that. You know? Do you think that there's a season of life, though? Like, because I've, I've interviewed, you're, you're probably number 60 or 60-something, 60 and uh, I've had a lot of big names so far, right? And you're obviously, uh, you know, I, I look up to you. Um, like, I'm 27, right? So, like, a lot of dudes. I have Brian North. He sat right there. He said, dude, I, I grinded, 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 grinded cheated on my wife, screwed the whole thing up, right? I've had a well, lot of there. a lot of dudes have sat there and said that they've worked too hard, they worked too much, they didn't keep the main thing, the main thing, yep. they didn't, right? <clears throat> but is there a season where you have to do that? Like, can you? Because, yeah. like, when you're young, right? Like, you know, like, for me, for right now, I don't have kids. I, I, I did just get engaged, but no kids yet. Congrats on that, though. Thank you, thank you, yeah. And, um... And I'm in grind mode right now. And and I battle it, right? Because I talk to guys that are older than me that clearly have more wisdom and knowledge than yeah. I have, right? And I'm like, okay, do I do I pivot in three or four or five years? Or do I try to start to pivot now? Like, do I do I have balance in a couple of years? Or do I try to have balance in the beginning too? Because for me, I'm still kind of in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been at it for almost a decade, but I'm still so young. You see what I'm saying? So like for yeah. somebody watching or listening and they're young, like, should they be attempting to balance it all perfectly now, or should they embrace the grind in the beginning, but know that there's got to be a point in time? 80, 20, then 20, 80. Mm. That's what I always live off. Mm. So when I, when I built it, I knew we had to sacrifice for a little bit, and we knew we had to, you know, wasn't going to do it, but I knew the end goal. So I would say it was about 18 months. Mm -hmm. But I ruined our relationship mm. with my wife and I. And mm -hmm. fuck, dude, I was living in, like, a lot of people don't know my story of, like, you know, that, but I was living in another room for nine months. We were going to get divorced and shit. Mm -hmm. We were done. Um, cause I did lose focus, right? It was just where you say the grind, 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 kind of, or Brian North, whatever, same thing. Like people yep. don't understand that, but like relationships are hard, dude. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they're hard is we don't have a relationship with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then when we got through that and I was like, look, this is how I'm going to live my life. You can be on the train or not. Like, I'm not forcing you to be here. I choose to be with you. I choose to do these things. And now, 
you know, and then she decided to go be a rep. I'm like, I'm her biggest raving fan. Mm -hmm. Really quick, if you're a real estate agent in the state of Arizona and you're looking to join a phenomenal team, then I would love to have a conversation with you. If you're looking for an incredible culture, you're looking for lead generation, you're looking for transaction coordination, then I would love to have a conversation and see if you would be a great fit for our team, okay? So again, if you're an agent in the state of Arizona, make sure you text the number 480-418-5339, the word agent. Okay, again, 480-418-5339, the word agent. Now let's go ahead and get back to the show. People are like, I can't believe, you know, like, she's I'm like, she wanted, she just wanted to do it, dude. Like, why wouldn't I, she supported me and I took advantage of that. So mm -hmm. I, I was saying your, um, in your life of like, whatever, I'm, dude, I'm not perfect by any means. I tell people all the time and I don't think anybody is, mm -hmm. right? Smoke and mirrors of life, but I, I don't put it out. I'm fucking real. Mm -hmm. You ask me a question, I will be 100% fucking honest to you. Yeah. I don't need a, you know, but I don't think people are mm. and because uh, they don't like themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I think people deflect. I think people that work, 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 work. Don't know what it's like to love yourself. I That's agree why that. they fucking work too much. I agree with that. And so then they don't know how to love themselves. So they don't know how to love the people that love them. Mm -hmm. And so they're present in the people that they love, but they're not really present because they don't know how to. Like I always tell people, if you really want to build a business, and I, if I was to ask you, who's your ideal client? Mm -hmm. Who would be your ideal client? In terms of like just in one of my companies? Just anything, yeah. Who's your ideal client? I'd have to put some thought into that. So you know it's real easy? Let me tell you this. When you do your interviews next time, you know who your ideal client is? Yourself. Because mm. if you can sell yourself on your bullshit, you can sell anybody. Mm. Mm -hmm. if you can be true to what you believe in. And, and once, you, once you... So when I was grinding, and I, or the grind mode, or whatever they say... When I found out I was good is because I really found the passion. I extremely like helping people win, dude. I don't think there's that many people out in the world that want people to win. Like mm -hmm. they, people are hating on each other and stuff. Like, like, like I knew, I knew you from, uh, cause I know Skylar, Skylar's mm -hmm. a good yep. buddy of mine. And then uh, a couple other, you know, guys that he rolls with are kind of dipshits. But, um, <laughs> but I, uh, I, you know, from a, from an outside perspective, you know, I've watched you do the ATMs and mm -hmm. I've watched you guys, you know, do other stuff than mm -hmm. to get the, you know, the real estate or whatever. And then, you know, where people, when you started your stuff, like, and I didn't know people were like saying, Oh, I'm going to go do this or do that. And I'm like, I didn't really know you. Mm -hmm. And I judged you. I would say that mm -hmm. for, for whatever it is. And I've been judged my whole life. Sure. But then when you really think about it and you get outside of that personal space of going, Hey, I really, I was judging you. Cause maybe I was like, well, fuck dude, maybe this guy, you know, whatever it, you know, who, but who cares at the end of the day. Right. I would say who cares at the end of the day. So if I was to tell anybody, and they really want to get real with something like the reason we judge others because we just don't like them ourselves. Mm -hmm. We agree. deflect from our bullshit. And like, and people are like, oh, you're you're judging. I'm like, no, I'm telling you the truth because I've been there. Like, I know how that shit feels. Like, mm -hmm. I want everybody to win. Like, doesn't matter who you are. Like, I've got my buddy. Oh my god, dude. So this guy I meet <laughs> at Bike Week, I, I, he gets out there. I mean, this guy, it, uh, he's tatted from head to toe. I mean, we're <laughs> mustache, got the bike. We're riding down Scottsdale Road. Got his shirt off. We're all in our baggers, right? So, you know, I'm tatted up too. People were looking at him like rolling their way. <laughs> I mean, yeah. judging him. And I didn't really know him at the time. And I and I got to know him. And like, uh, I just asked him. I said, "What do you do for? What do you do for a living?" He's like, "I'm a barber." Hmm. And he, I'm like, "What got you into that?" He goes, "Dude, we were going to a Halloween thing when I was 19, and I cut my buddy's hair like vanilla ice, and I really enjoyed it. So I just went to barber school." Hmm. He's like, "I really like it." And then we just got it talking. And then um, yesterday, because we had just met a couple of days ago, he comes to me. He's like, dude, I really like you. And he goes, why? I'm like, because you, you took an interest in me. And most people don't. Mm. I said, bro, I just asked you common questions. Like, people don't do that. Mm -hmm. People don't do that anymore. And, and, and when they ask a question, they don't remember. Like, you repeated everything back in detail of what I told you. Mm -hmm. And that's an art. Like, if people are in sales, that's if you want to be good at sales, that's it. And for where you say the sacrifice, Pat told me one time, because he's followed my trend for, for years, and he goes, you can work now mm -hmm. and enjoy. You can enjoy now, but you'll have to work at some point, mm -hmm. or you can just consistently work. Pick one. Mm. Those are the three levels, because no matter what, a tree's going to grow up. Sure. So you just determine how fast you want to grow up. Mm. Do you want to pour a bunch of water on it and get it rolling right now, or do you just want to get enough to where it just slowly grows? Mm -hmm. And so I just think it's... For me, 
um, where I made my mistake is I wasn't very, uh, I didn't communicate well mm. of what my goals were daily, weekly, or monthly. And, um, and I think that's what destroyed our relationship for a while. And, you know, we're st we still work through some shit, bro, you yeah. know, but we got kids and it's just fucking life is fun, dude. I just tell yeah. you, but, but I think if I was to tell anybody that's getting in any business or whatever, and you have a spouse or you're going to get in a relationship and you know, you're going to have to go through some stuff, communicate, over communicate that. Mm -hmm. They'll have a finer appreciation because now that my wife's doing title and stuff and doing that, which I wanted to have a skill set, but she's really been like, my God, I was not thankful for everything. Like, did not understand why you're waking up at 1 30 in the morning. She's like, yeah. and four o'clock every day and doing the stuff. And all you're doing is just providing. She's like, I, it's just hard enough to get an agent to like, you know, not ask me for free shit. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. what every realtor wants. And I think that's a bad habit in real estate. Like, I, I think. In my opinion, MSAs in from title or mortgage or whatever it is in real estate, I think they're fucking stupid, bro. Mm. Go buy your own shit and own your own company. Mm -hmm. If you want my opinion, like, because when MSAs were great during the two years, now they're not, and now you're losing money. Well, they don't realize now you you got to you got to pay now too because mm -hmm. it's a partnership. Yep, that's what a lot of people are figuring. Out. I want out of this. That's no, not how it works. Yep, because when it was good, it was good, right? Mm -hmm. And now we're not there. So now you owe us a fifteen hundred dollar check. You're not getting a fifteen hundred check. People were freaking out mm -hmm. because it wasn't, they were so mirrored by the money. Like what we have in our industry is like, we're so we're in society. We're so like, Oh my gosh, that guy's got the fancy cars or whatever. I'm like, but shit, you don't know what it, how long it took me to get there. And right. all the cars I got repoed or the houses I had foreclosed on or people never how broke I was. And yeah. you know, it's not, I just bought it cause it was my dream car. And I told For you, sure. I'm like, I'm going to sell it and get rid of it. Cause I'll buy some other shit. So me and my son could go up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. I don't need to drive it anymore. I love that. Yeah, phenomenal. I, I love that. I'm a big car guy, too. I, it has nothing to do with the price tag of the car. I just love cars, right? Um, so you had one. Yeah, bro. I love everything you said about relationships and, and, and people overworking because they don't love themselves. Just everything you said, I think, is just phenomenal, and I think people get a lot of value from that. Um, I want to pivot and, and talk. I know your time is super valuable, and you have Bike Week, but I want to talk just really quick about the real estate market. Yeah, and uh, I love asking people, bro. Especially people who are in real estate. Everybody, I, I always, I always preface like, "Hey, nobody's got a crystal ball, right?" Right. But what do you think? You know, in your opinion, what what do you think the next year, two years, five years? What do they look like? People study history, right? Stock market's always gone up. Mm -hmm. House prices always gone up. Cars have always gone up. What do people have in common? I always buy stuff. Mm -hmm. People have to have a place to live. Um, I think our industry is oversaturated with people that don't have value um, and a skill set because they're just taught to just be more transactional. I think we need to get back to the basics. I think if a brokerage or a team or what you ask that or whatever, I think they need to focus more on the relationship driven. And like every, if I was running a team every fucking day, they'd be doing handwritten cards mm -hmm. every day or send out cards and they'd be building a relationship and DM people just be like, Hey, have a great day. Or, Oh my gosh, that's so great. Or so to just, just get back. Those are the basics that I think were lost in the industry. And I think the reason why people aren't surviving in the industry, whether it's two years from now or three years from now or five years from now, if you don't build a business that's a relationship business, you will not survive. Mm. Because in any market, short sell, REO, foreclosure, whatever it is, people are still buying and selling homes. Mm -hmm. You just have to determine why they're not buying them from you. Like I had somebody I did a training for, a team, mm -hmm. and they – um they talked about their cold calling and they're like, Oh yeah, about every hundred calls we get like one deal or like a good prospect of lead. I said, okay. And I'm like, so how long does that take you? And we, they're like, well, I don't know. We don't time it. I'm like, you need to fucking time your phone calls. How long it takes you to make hundred contacts. Right. And I slowed down and I said, Hey, think about this in, in our market of where it is. You had a hundred people, right? I go, what did you do with the other 99? Oh, well, we put them in like whatever. I'm like, have you ever gotten a phone call where you couldn't take it at the time or mm -hmm. Maybe you had a death in the family, or maybe you were just going through some shit, and the last thing you want to talk about is buying and selling a fucking house. Because mm -hmm. these leads, most people that go on a team when they're leads and they come on that's been there, they're old leads, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I said, so, I mean, the real estate market's just, you got to understand that people, like, would you want somebody calling you all day? Mm -hmm. Would you want some people sending you, like, stupid-ass emails and stupid texts? <laughs> then why are you doing that in your yeah. business? So if you say, what do you think the real estate market's going to do? I think the people that still do that are going to be the ones that are still struggling. Mm -hmm. And the people that pivot the other direction, like I, I coach on, are going to be Killing the thriving, game. bro. Yeah, for sure. Because those are people like 
ninety percent of realtors, you know, their their follow up's shitty. They only ten percent. They kind of do it okay. Yep. But like, I mean, it's just you should be able to close somebody if you have to sell someone on the phone. That means you don't have content out there that's showing them who you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what just simplify it. Like if I was to tell somebody, like, where's the market going in three to four years? If you don't have basically a, a training system for your buyers and sellers. Where it's eight o'clock at night and they got a question and they got to wait till the next morning. Now they have anxiety the entire night. And then in the morning, you don't wake up on time because you went to too many happy hours and you don't get back to them until 9 30, 10. Mm -hmm. What'd you just create? No value. Yeah. So you really need to build systems and, and clear. I would say if people are going to survive in three to five years, what the real estate market's going to do, we need to be better at setting clear expectations and clear boundaries with our clients. Because mm. we don't set boundaries. Like, I remember when I was a, when I did the title set, people were like, oh, my person does this open house. I'm like, great. Work with them. Because I'm not bringing you fucking cookies and water. But I'll teach you how to do an open house properly. Ask me if they know how to do this. And they're like, well, they don't. And I'm like, and I've had clients once I quit and open up my coaching. They're like, oh, God, I wish I would have been to your stuff. Because when I did my boot camps, you had to send me all your business or you could not come. Mm -hmm. And I brought 400 realtors in one year to that company. And then, you know, they bitched at me. And when I left, all those onesie twosies, guess what? left too. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, I don't know, you just got to have your value proposition where it is. Yeah. I mean, if people say like rates have gone, rates go up and go down. I think they had a statistic of like 1981. It was like 13%. My and grandparents, 1983 was like three. I was at my grandparents house the other day and uh, he's like, Austin, when we bought a house. We were, at, we got 19% interest rate. Right. You know, they still own that house to this day. Right. But I, I think, we have too many people trying to keep up with the Joneses in today's society too. Mm -hmm. Like I could buy a bigger, nicer house. Yeah. I like my house. The kids works great for me. What do I need a bigger house for? My wife's always like, let's go get a big house. Let's go do this. I'm like, why? Yeah. What's wrong with our house? We sleep. We got a kitchen. We can hang out in the backyard, park our cars. Nice. Kids grew up here. They're born in this house. Like mm -hmm. maybe down the road, we get a different, you know, my parents want to us to buy a, a, a bigger lot so they can have like a, their retirement yeah. house on there so they can just travel. Yeah. That's what they want us to do. And we just have a wall in between. Cause Mike, mm -hmm. I mean, we get along great. I, if I was to do something, that's what I would do. Other than that, I don't really need a house, you know? Yep. But, um, yeah, I think it's just, uh, I mean, look, look at this. It's like when the business was the best it was, people were paying 40, 50,000, but okay. But now those prices have come down and now you're getting seller concessions again, Yep. but they don't know how to like explain that to a client. Cause what you posted for so many years is, Oh, I got this house. So the people that were like, oh, I got my client $50,000 more. So now what are you telling all your buyers? Mm -hmm. And when, you know what really, okay, so you know what truthfully messes up a market? Mm. Is when realtors are out there telling them it's a seller's market. Mm. Or you tell them it's a buyer's market. Let me ask you this because you're a realtor. Mm -hmm. Don't you need, if you're going to sell a house, don't you need somebody that's going to buy the house? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need a buyer. Yep. And if you're a buyer, you need somebody that's selling your house, mm -hmm. right? So you need both parties. Yep. Why do realtors in our industry will always be like, oh, it's a seller's market. Oh, it's yep. this market. Oh, it's this. They're the ones that are screwing their own business. Mm -hmm. Stay neutral. Yep. It's a great time to buy, great time to sell. Always. But people don't market that way. You know why? Because they go to these fucking Cromford report bullshit, mm -hmm. which I think is, dude, whatever. People buy and sell. Oh, my God, they're going to predict this. Yep. Yeah, well, you know, you know who predicts what their income is going to be? Mm -hmm. You on how hard you work mm -hmm. and the shit you put into it. The the market, not the statistics. Because rates go up and down. Yep. House prices go up and down. When I have a full course, I don't know. But people still need a place to live. There's always a buyer. There's always a right, seller. Right, but look how many realtors out there, and I'm sure you've done it. I mean, I've done it when I was yep. in, when I did stuff. Hey, it's a great seller's market. Guys, if you're ready to list your house, do it. Yeah. Well, then I told all my buddies that we're going to buy a house, like, well, you shouldn't buy. Yeah. So that was kind of a done move, right. you know? Mm -hmm. No, you literally are getting half of the market when you do that. Yeah. You know, because you're you're telling the other half, don't do it. Well, it's like it's like when the political shit went through, right? Mm -hmm. You're a Trump guy or a mm -hmm. guy that likes to eat. Can't remember his name. <laughs> voter. I mean, whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm pro fucking Trump, baby. Yep. But that's because it's like life. Like, I mean, you just people don't understand it. The problem with real estate and people that get into real estate. If I was asking them, like, have you really studied real estate, the history of real estate? Because the 3% came around with Century 21. They got to create that. That's how really the 3% came around. So it's just historically always been there, and the consumer doesn't know any different. Mm -hmm. Now the consumer is getting smarter because people are saying you're overpaying your realtor that doesn't have any value. And realtors can't see that. And then they want to post. <laughs> Dude, the dumbest post I saw was, well, consumers understand we have to pay for our own health care and our blah, 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 and our company. 
okay. That's called being an entrepreneur, yep. Captain Obvious. Mm-hmm. Like shitting hard. Yeah. Like, but realtors are not entrepreneurs. No, they're which not. Which is a whole nother. They don't even know, bro. I like ask yeah. them, I'm like, what's your PL? Uh, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, well, what, how much money do you put back into your client? What do you mean? Like, what's your six month, your three month, your five year touch program with you? And what do you invest back and what do you give them? Yeah. What do you mean? And I'm like, they just told me I need a CRM and I just mm-hmm. stick them in there and then that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I'm like, and that's why your business does not grow. Mm-hmm. And 90% of the referrals that would go to you are going to someone else. For sure. Because you you didn't establish the relationship reason of why you needed the referral. Yeah. You just got done with the transaction. You give them a shitty closing gift of perishable fruit mm-hmm. and didn't collect that. I remember one time, dude, I was in I was in the office and this guy lost his shit because his realtor got him um, some alcohol, some wine, hmm. wine basket, really nice wine basket. He was a recovering alcoholic. Oh, my gosh. Because you didn't take the time to get to know your client. All you mm-hmm. did is knew what they wanted there. Like when I ask my clients, like, hey, when you get a buyer, what's the first thing you say? Well, have you been looking? What are you looking at? Well, that's why they're calling you. No, yeah. you slow down. Get to know them. Talk to them. Yeah, it's just so, I mean, I could go about what the market's going to be forever, but sure. these are ideas of why a market fails or it doesn't work, you know, because now look how everybody's advertising. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's in a crash. It's in this. It's No, it's not. Yep. Strong. Strong. The market's the, real strong right The economy's now down as far as that because people overspend mm-hmm. right that we have more credit card debt than we've ever had people are up you know they're well, i can afford like i remember when i when i bought my house that i live in now i was approved with the same mortgage that i had even for another one that for a house it was like 1.4 so mm-hmm. i could get my own house mm-hmm. and get a 1.4 million dollar house you, you know how much i i spent on my house when i when i bought it 600 four hundred and seven thousand dollars <laughs> Yeah. Now it's worth a million, for sure. but when I was approved for that, I spent four hundred seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars, even though I knew I could go up to the max yeah. of where it was. Live below your means, it's the number one thing. Yeah, I mean, people don't. I mean, I I, I buy shit right. I buy my cars right. Mm-hmm. This this right. Yep. You know, I can turn around and make some money on this. Sure. But um, but yeah, it's just people got more month at the end of the money. I always talk about it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's just they're always chasing something, man. Yeah. Yeah. Chase freedom. I love that, dude. Yeah. I think more people should. Yeah, I think I way more people should. Yeah, yeah, and I think that, uh, yeah, the realtors too, the realtor thing, man, the entrepreneur thing. I, I, I don't know how you're ever going to fix that problem, but I ego is just... such a big thing in our industry, dude. Because mm-hmm. they get stroked with the, you know, the problem is, and I was the culprit of this is like the title people and the mortgage people trying to get your business, they're just stroking you like, oh mm-hmm. my god, you're so great, blah blah blah. And then I flipped the script and I was like, I'm just going to start teaching my own classes and, and literally crush these other people that mm-hmm. are in my industry because they don't know it, right? And I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get you more business mm-hmm. so you can go buy that dream car instead of doing your vision board that you're never going to get. Yep. You're never going to go on that vacation because you don't have the right team around you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be your team, but I'm going to hold you accountable. You just at this point, and would you agree that realtors are like just adults in general, they're sensitive? Mm-hmm. Like we're just so sensitive. Yep. Oh my God, he offended me, but yet we'll go, they'll go yell at their kids. Mm-hmm. But I remember people will be like, well, dude, you're a little harsher at this point. I'm like, okay, I'm a fucking coach, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, my job is to pull something out of you, like yeah. emotion out of you. Why well, don't like the way you presented it? I'm like, have you ever, and I remember somebody told me that one time, I'm like, have you ever yelled at your kid? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't yell at him anymore then. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if you don't like the way I'm presenting things, your kid definitely doesn't like the way you present things. Yep. And you know what I'm going to tell you? And they were like, whatever. I'm like, your kids are probably going to be fucking pussies when they're older, mm-hmm. too. They're going to be the sensitive people of the world that think their entitlement is they should have all these things and, Whatever it is. And I said, I'm sorry that people don't understand that, but that's just life. But, I mean, we're just so sensitive. And I raise my kids to be tough, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't like somebody? Tell them. Agreed. But I also think there's so many bullies. Like, if my daughter knows that any time a kid comes to school and they're new, she's going to go sit and eat lunch with them for the week and introduce them to all her friends. I love that. Because, you know what? That's And I said, I told her one time, I said, if you don't do that, that's bullying. And I remember there were some kids that made fun of her for doing that. And I remember I picked her up one day from school. So when I was doing bodybuilding, I used to be a little bigger. And I had my stringer yeah. workout shirt. And my daughter goes, she goes, Dad, those were the boys that made yeah. fun of me, right? And, I'm, and I look at them, and I'm like, your, <laughs> your parents must be really proud, huh? You pick on a girl? <laughs> like, you as a boy, makes you feel good? I said, I said, your dad pick you up from school? He goes, yeah. I'm like, I want, I want you to know. I want you to point me out when your dad sees it so he and I can have a conversation right. about what the fuck's wrong with you. And I just said it, and all these people around, like teachers, I'm like, dude, we're teaching our kids wrong. Mm-hmm. Like society's weird right now. Yeah. Weird, real weird. 
Yeah, like, and that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah, but that's I mean, but that's what hours. makes our real estate community weird. Because mm-hmm. now we're dividing people. Would you, you know what I mean? Yeah, Some I people do. don't want to work with somebody because they don't like my political stance or my my opinions on like, if you like the same sex, my brother's gay, I don't give a shit less, bro. Mm-hmm. I could care less. As long as you're happy, you do you, boo. Mm-hmm. But when you try to entertain that because my hair is a certain way or I've got tattoos or I carry myself a different way or, or whatever it is, the real estate community is dividing itself just on that alone. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? You I can would. see it, right? Totally. Like they'd work with you for somebody. I want to work with a man versus, well, why don't you just work with somebody who's got value? Yeah. And I thought it was interesting. They did a study on a, on a court case and they had where they, this person, this chick had the charge, but they took it that it was like a, a a, a colored person where there was like 350 tattoos and they just had an image of them Uh and they fucking nailed them. And so that's what the chick's, but it was just a test to be like, look, we're so stereotypes. But that's how real estate shifts too. For sure, stereotypes of the world, and yeah. I think we just need to stop doing that. Just stay neutral. We do, and be positive. Mm-hmm. I couldn't agree more, dude. And I think when the when the real estate market shifts, everybody goes into panic mm-hmm. instead of positivity. Yeah, yeah, they go into scarcity. They contract. You gotta you gotta grow, dude. You gotta expand. This is the best market ever sure. to be a real estate agent right now mm-hmm. because everybody's scared. Dude, we're doing more deals than we've ever done right now because you got you got people out there that want to work. Well, and but we teach them the right stuff. Well, people don't want to work, bro. That's true. You're teaching them work ethic is what you're teaching them. Yeah. So if you say, "What's the best thing you can do for a brokerage or team?" Teach them a work ethic. Mm -hmm. Teach them to run a business. Mm -hmm. Teach them to be P and L. Because when they get the real estate license, they don't know marketing. Yeah. You know that's why they go to these title reps or whatever it is, or hire a coach. Maybe I I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I keep my shit affordable for people to be in the industry, right? Mm -hmm. But I always say like, there's just too many smoke and mirrors, man. You need to be like relatable. So yeah, just and have fun doing it. Yeah. People don't have fun anymore. That's a big part. Yeah. I see some of you guys' stuff. You guys have fun when you're we here. We have a ton of fun, bro. Yeah. But I, I think it's a lost culture where it's just like, I'm going to go in the office and I'm going to grind. No. Go in the office, do your work, but have fun doing your work. Yep. Otherwise, you're just you're not going to like your job Yeah, it doesn't even longer. feel like a grind. Yeah, you're not going to like your job very much longer. I can say that. Yeah. I agree with that, dude. But I don't ever feel... I mean, it, it. don't get me wrong. I grind hard, but it doesn't feel like a grind. Right. You know? Well, you're young, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Get my age when you you know your body hurts. You gotta have a cold plunge in your garage <laughs> yeah, so you can yeah. just get down and get your body right. I do the cold plunge. I got a cold plunge on the rooftop of the Optima. I bought one of those yeah. uh, XLs and put it in my garage. Dude, those things are bad ass. Got it set at fifty two degrees, yeah. sitting at five minutes, mm-hmm. four times a week. That's the uh, it's called the plunge, right? Like yeah. the brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got mm-hmm. a circulating water and those everything. Those are cool. When I get another house, I sold my house and moved in over here. But when I get another house, I I told myself I'm gonna buy one of those, and then I want to get that circular uh, sauna to put right next to it. Yeah, I. Uh, I might do a steam sauna. I was in uh, San Antonio for a golf trip, and then I had this a steam sauna. I'm like, I think I need this. Really? A steam sauna? Yeah, so mm-hmm. like literally it was in a shower. You just hit a button. By the time you get in, it's 125 degrees, and it's steamy, and wow. then you're showering, and it's like steam and shower, obviously so good for your pores and yep. everything and your body and just everything, and I we just sat there. Wow, put some eucalyptus in there. and Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, this. okay, this works. <laughs> yeah, like when you that. get old, bro, and you've been through <laughs> enough injuries and broken bones as I have, <laughs> yeah. sometimes it's a, it's a tough day to like yeah. – yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm getting ready to ride the first day. My wife's kneeling me with the thing in the back and I'm cold plunging. I'm like, okay, I got to survive. Yeah. I need Advil and, you know, uh-huh. but it's just, you know, but I plan for it. I prep mm. for it. Um, I think people need to prep more in life, but I think yeah. the goals of daily, weekly and monthly will help anybody. Yeah. I love that, dude. Yeah. I love that. Uh, last question for you. If you, if you, uh, we'll just take your, I know you have three kids, but we'll just take your four year old just, okay. just cause he's the youngest, right? He's the youngest. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you had to give him one piece of advice, for some reason you today was your last day, right? And there's just one piece of advice you could give him, leave him with. This is kind of the thing that he would remember, like, hey, that was that was my daddy's advice, right? Like life advice, whatever it might be. What would that be? Stay true to yourself. Mm. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do shit. Because I, I I tell my I told uh, I tell people all the time, you have to wake up with a mindset. You know, don't don't scramble your mindset. So I wake up with two things, and I tell my kids this all the time. I wake up every day. I want to change somebody's life and help somebody be better. And then the second one, I'm a bad motherfucker, bro. Prove me wrong. Yeah. Because I, we, I can prove you wrong in all aspects of whatever you want to do. And I, and I tell them, I'm like, be strong. But be true to yourself. Because mm-hmm. you're always going to have somebody that's going to try to sway you to do it the way that they think needs to be done. Just stay true to yourself and be happy with yourself. Mm-hmm. And, I, awesome. and you, you can't be beat. You can't be beat. Phenomenal advice. That's the mic drop. I love it, bro. Yeah. Where can people find you? Where can they, if they want to get coached by you, they want to get mentorship, they want yeah. to reach out to you, where can they get a hold of you? I mean, you can find me on, and you can Google me. You find me on my, you know, my website's got you all the information. You got a good Google, but <laughs> like yeah, you're talking Google about me, yeah. earlier. 
Yeah, well, I didn't you before. I didn't before. You know, I mean, it. it uh, I I didn't. You know, yeah. and then you know the social. Obviously, my handles are all the same. John Story, not hard. Yeah. I don't put John Story real story coach out of John Story underscore exclamation mark <laughs> yeah. one two three four. Yeah, no, it's just John Story. It's bottom <laughs> underscore and whatever. And then my you know personal Facebook, I got it there. But I mean, yeah, you can reach out to me anywhere. My phone number's everywhere. Shoot me a DM, call me, text me. I'm available. I awesome. respond. Oh, the, you know, you know what? Interesting. Just mm -hmm. last thing. Realtors have the worst response time mm. I've ever seen in my history. Like it takes them forever, and I respond quite quick. Mm. And if I could tell somebody you want to be successful, dude. Be better on your phone about responding yeah. to certain things. Dude, I think I DM'd you, and you responded in, like, three minutes. Like, I remember DMing you, and I was like, I want you on the pod. And you, like, replied right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be too busy for the people that want you to win. Yeah. I think we forget that. Yeah. Stay true, man. Have fun. I love that, bro. Right, I man. appreciate you being on, dude. I really yeah. do. I appreciate Thanks, your man. time and you taking the time out of your day. and. And I'm excited to continue to build our relationship. It worked out perfect. I planned my day around it because I'm literally going across the street. I love that. Yeah, that's Very why I planned cool. it on this day to yeah. come here. It I worked love it, out. Dude. Yeah, you gotta love it. You're a planner, and you were here early too, which is great. Uh, I I always like if I do something to be 45 minutes at least early. That's that's that. that's on that's on time to me. Mm. The appointment was at 11, and I I You're was 10, I 15. My, yeah, I, well, I went. Got, I knew I had to go get my coffee. I knew that yeah. was gonna take 10 minutes, and then I was gonna come in and yeah, sit hey. down. And, Worked out better for me, bro. I, I I keep telling my creative director, she's also my fiance. You, you met her. Yeah. Um. I'm like, I, w I want to start doing podcasts early. I was like, I like doing them early. People keep booking in the afternoon, right? And I like doing them early. So I'm glad you came in early. Yeah. I just uh, it's it's learning to be considerate of others. So like, if I was running behind or whatever, I hate it when people are late. It just means you don't value their time. You only value yours. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to show you that, you know, even I got a lot of shit going on or whatever, but um. I wanted you to understand that, like, I'm here. So you're not worrying, like, hey, is John here? Is John here? Is John here? It's one less thing you got to worry about. Yeah. I really appreciate that. It means the world, dude. And anytime, next time I come hang out with you, you'll see how early I am. I'm normally not 45, I'm like a half hour. Well, early. for this, yeah. But I mean, lunch, I'm always 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, early. yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm always, dude, I, I, I grew up with my grandparents. Okay. So, like, they taught me, you know, like, literally, yeah, you, don't, you don't get, you don't show up late. Right. And, and you don't show up on time either. It's not respectful. No, it's not respectful at all. I, yeah. I get I crack down on the people around me. I have a couple people in my life who relate to everything, and I give them a hard time. I just don't hang out with them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, dude, I'm like, I'm like, you're like, I, right. I'm so old and 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 been through so many things of life, man. If people can't respect that shit, I, I don't. It's yeah. not even. My, it's not my jam anymore. I got enough things I can do for sure. I love that, so. dude. I appreciate you being on. Yeah, brother. for sure, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, if you're still watching, if you're on YouTube, smash the like button. Really appreciate you. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to put all of John's links in the description down below. Make sure you reach out to him. And if you're listening on any platform at all, it would mean the absolute world to me if you would give a five-star review. And again, all the links to him will be in the, in the description down below. Thank you again, and we'll see you in the next one.